all wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss something astronomers have never seen before. For the first time ever, scientists have observed a distant galaxy activating and basically acquiring what's known as an active galactic nucleus, something that we usually associate with things like quasars produced by powerful supermassive black holes in the center of various galaxies. And so in this video, let's talk about why this is actually kind of unusual and somewhat important, and of course discuss these AGNs in a little bit more detail. And let's start with this beautiful zoom showing us where this galaxy is located, but also discuss AGNs. So what are they and why are they kind of crucial? Well, as you might have learned from a lot of previous videos, all of this is a result of a central black hole, and though most black holes, like the ones in the center of our own galaxy, are not actually active and barely produce any emissions, some supermassive black holes remain active for millions or even billions of years, producing an enormous amount of energy. Here's the famous M87, the black hole whose picture was captured a few years back. And so in every single case, a typical AGN is an extremely compact region, like in this galaxy, UGC 1693, that ends up emitting a lot of energy in a lot of different frequencies, actually usually most frequencies, radio waves, x-rays, gamma rays, even UV light. And so any galaxy that hosts an active black hole is referred to as an AGN, and they do come in different types. Some of them are more visible in the x-rays, some of them are more visible in the radio light, and today it's believed that maybe it's actually because of the angle of observation. Depending on our perspective, we usually see slightly different frequencies in much higher proportions. But most of these emissions are basically produced by just two components, the massive accretion disk and the torus, and the very powerful astrophysical jet. With all of this very likely powered by a lot of gas falling into the black hole and forming very large accretion disks, potentially for millions of years. With different regions of the accretion disk basically producing different emissions, with the most powerful objects, known as quasars and blazers, basically being the ones whose jets are pointed almost directly at us. And this one here is the most famous, 3C273. This is actually the one that basically allowed the scientists to explain everything. By measuring the redshift of this object, researchers realized that this was really far away, suggesting that whatever this was, it was hundreds of times more powerful than anything in the Milky Way galaxy. And within just a few years, we had several explanations, all basically involving accretion disks. And so it's really these disks that seem to produce most of the emissions. With the jets responsible for some of the most powerful emissions, but in this case we have to be staring almost directly at them. And because these objects are so bright, they can basically be seen from pretty much most of the locations in the entire universe. Which is one way scientists have been able to study the evolution of the universe and in the process discover how galaxies evolve. For example, now we know that billions of years ago, during the so-called galactic noon, the universe was filled with a lot of really bright, really powerful AGNs that produced enormous amounts of energy, which basically suggested that massive black holes formed really early, with the rest of the galaxy then forming around them. And all of this resulted in very powerful emissions that essentially influenced everything around these objects. As a matter of fact, we know that these objects can easily influence stars inside the galaxy, either shutting down or restarting star formation, and can sometimes even drain nearby galaxies, basically killing them in the process. And so these objects play a really important role in galactic evolution, star formation, and literally the evolution of the entire universe. But for the most part, because these processes take millions and billions of years, we've always just seen either galaxies being AGNs, or some galaxies that seem to be quiet but have potentially been AGNs in the past. And one of the most famous examples of a shutdown AGN is probably right here. You can learn more about this galaxy in one of the videos in the description, but this green object is known as the Hanny's Vorwarp. It's essentially an echo because powerful emissions from somewhere are basically illuminating gas in this region, making it glow in green light. But where is this light from? Well, the only nearby object is of course that galaxy, IC2497. And because it's about 100,000 light years away from this green blob, here it suggests that approximately 100,000 years ago, this was also an AGN. But for some reason, this galaxy was then shut down. And very similar signs have been detected in a lot of other galaxies, possibly implying something similar going on there as well. 
But in this case, all of this happened thousands and thousands of years ago, basically showing you the timeline of how long all of this takes. As a matter of fact, here's at least one other study from 2017 that discusses at least one other galaxy where it seems to show signs of both turning on and turning off, but once again, all of this taking thousands and thousands of years. And though we obviously see smaller black holes turn on and turn off all the time, when it comes to these massive black holes, it does take a while. A typical AGN would usually take thousands of years to just get started. But because all of this is very important for galactic evolution, and because our own galaxy seems to have a very quiet black hole, a lot of scientists actually want to understand how all of this connects, mostly because we also want to understand how Sagittarius A star, the central black hole in the Milky Way galaxy, influenced everything as well. But then, in 2019, researchers discovered something really unexpected. Or actually, technically, it was not unusual at first, but it did become unusual now, five years later. They actually discovered a galaxy with a relatively long name as DSS 1335 plus 0728, basically turning on and literally becoming an AGN. Now, at first, scientists believed that this was maybe a tidal disruption event, or basically a star passing close to the supermassive black hole, getting destroyed in the process, releasing a lot of energy. This is something we discussed previously in one of the videos in the description, and is something that's relatively common. But as they kept observing this galaxy 300 million light years away from us, they realized that it was growing brighter and brighter in different frequencies, first increasing in optical, infrared and ultraviolet light, and then, in February of this year, 2024, it started to glow in the X-rays. And this is something that we've never seen before anywhere, with the only possible explanation being that this galaxy is slowly becoming an AGN, making this the first time ever astronomers have ever seen this. And if correct, this is really important for the studies of the Milky Way galaxy, mostly because of the unusual phenomenon known as the Fermi bubbles that was discovered by the Fermi telescope approximately one decade ago. This too is a sign of sudden extreme activity from the central black hole in the Milky Way galaxy that potentially happened a couple of million years ago. And so by studying this galaxy, we might actually see how all of this progresses practically in real time, helping scientists understand how these events influence galaxies, in the process helping us solve this mystery as well. And interestingly, because the black hole in this case is approximately three times less massive than Sagittarius A star, it's about 1.5 million solar masses, in some sense it also has quite a lot of parallels with our own galaxy as well. And so since we actually know so little about how supermassive black holes become active, for astrophysicists this is one of the most important discoveries of the last few decades. But on the other hand, it could also be maybe some kind of a very anomalous, very unusual tidal disruption event after all. Maybe this was just a really massive star that basically activated this black hole for a few years, but all of this might actually stop in the near future. And so obviously additional observations are going to be required and obviously will be conducted just to see where all of this goes. And so once there are some updates, or once we learn what's actually happening here, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by doing a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.